enemy at our house, houses, at our homes, that we can feed the enemy um, that, that attacks our flesh and, and keeps us away from this lovely congregation and this love and this unity. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you that, that you've made this bonds of love mm-hmm. strong, strong yes. enough that the mm-hmm. devil can't, can't pierce that, can't attack mm-hmm. that. And he's trying every other mm-hmm. angle and way to get to us and get us separated and don't get us mm. to this place where we meet you. We want to plead that, um, that you will meet every need today, meet everyone at their particular place today, where they are. May they receive you. Mm. May, may they feel you. May they um, see you uh, grow in their lives. Um, I want to to bring everything that, that will happen today, this morning, and Brother Isaac bringing us the message, I want to bring that before your altar and lay it down and say, it is your will um, and not ours. May we, um, may we receive your, your message today and may we, um, may we stand on your word. Um, may we know that you are the healer, the only one, the eternal one. And, and we cannot wait the day that we can leave this flesh and meet you in the air. Mm. You are good to us. Mm. We are blessed Mm. and we are privileged Mm. to be called your children. Mm. May we be a a little light in this dark, dark Mm. world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, congregation. We are are few and far from, you know, scattered all the... and. yeah, I, I, I was actually quite sad coming here this morning. Not, <laughs> not sad that I'm coming here. On my way here, um, uh, the, like, I, like I just prayed, the, the devil can't get our love, he, the love for each other, the love mm. for our congregation and our family. And uh, anyone that knows me, if you come between me and my family, there's a big problem. Um, you can attack me. I don't care. I, I, I can lay down. You can do what you want. You don't attack my family. And uh, in the spiritual world, I, I, I would hope and, that I'm the same. Mm. And that's why I want to lay everything here mm. Mm. before the Lord's altar because mm. everyone's getting attacked. Mm. Um, we've had torn calves this weekend, well, last night. We've got kids that's spewing all over. We've got sick families and, and that's, that's separated and that's not here. And, and, and that is, this is not the Lord's will. I don't believe that a family would come. Uh, only half of the family would come to church and the other half not. And, and, and I, 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 yeah, I, I want to lay it all to, I want to ask you that you need to, to pray like never even before. Today and this week so that we can get healing, that we get, get that unity back and that we can, we can be in front of the Lord saying, this flesh is not mine and I don't care about it, but that will not keep me away. From your love and your goodness. Amen. So with with today, we'll um, we'll start with two five two. I saw the light. I'm gonna see the light today as well. Amen. We will see the light. We will see it tomorrow as well. We will receive it. And uh, yes, may your will be done this morning in the in the song Amen. service. We've got a nice little special coming up as well. Quite excited about that. Um, let's start with four. Why not? I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I've wandered so aimless, like play to sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. Now I'm so happy. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, 
back the night singing praise the Lord. I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, my sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fear I claim for my own. Then like a blind man who God gave back his sight, singing praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, my sorrow inside. Singing praise the Lord, I saw the light again. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. I am so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. Last verse. When death takes me down, I'm breathe here no more. My anthem will sound on that eternal shore. Amen. The angels in heaven on high singing praise the Lord. He is alive. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more light. Now I'm so happy, my sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, He see the light. Amen. 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 God is so good. And we did see the light. On Calvary, we saw the light. When we received that baptism, we saw the light. It was a wonderful day there. And uh, definitely I reminded the enemy to, this morning that, uh, that uh, he can go back to that spot. Just like Brother Ben said, take him back, back to that spot. And he was, he was there this morning. He did not like that. And, uh, but yeah, we are here to, uh, to have a warfare, unfortunately, on this earth. And, uh, but we'll face that because we've already won the battle. Mm-hmm. Amen. God is so good. Amen. He's so good to me. I have no idea what's the number. Sorry, Andy. But we'll start with it because it's very easy. And kids could sing along. Right, let's see if we can get that beat. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He died for my sin. Died for my sin, died for my sin, he's so good to me, he set me free, he set me free, he set me free, he's so good to me, God is so real. Is that an amen? God is so real, God is so real, is so good and real to me, God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good, again, God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Let's sing real again. God is so real, God is so real, God is so real, He's so real to me. God is so good, He's so good. Me. 
is wonderful. He's marvelous. Let's do uh, 219 in the sweet by and by. There's a land that's fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Whoa, I can't, cannot wait for that day. We've had some tough weeks and uh, I, can, I, can see the, I can see it amplify. I can see it coming closer. I can see the time is near. And um, yes, uh, the challenges are real, but so is God. And Amen. we'll face that and we'll look at the light as He is the light. Amen. We'll do this slightly, slightly, let's, how do we, <laughs> what's that term for? There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet. By and by, we shall be on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. Can't wait for that day. The melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more, nor the sigh of the blessing of rest, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that eternal shore, in the We shall meet on that beautiful shore To our bountiful Father above We will offer our tribute of praise For the glorious gift of His and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that eternal shore in the sweet by and by Last again. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by. to stand on that shore and see that light hey. and that peace and that well in the eternalness of that you can take your seats we've got a special today I don't want to give too much away Isaac will you uh, tell you when you uh, when he wrote that song <coughs> and the inspiration at that point you want okay. some beat with that yep yep yeah. Okay, this song is called um, Go Tell John. Um, and can you put the words up on the sc screen, Brother Andy? Okay, now, it's quite a wordy song. There's a lot of words to it. So it's, you've got to kind of take snippets of breath when you get a chance. 
It's one of those songs. <laughs> but um, the idea of the song is it sort of types John and his um, time that he had wondering whether Jesus was the Christ. And then it types that to this day. Some people think, you know, is it Brother Branham or someone else and all that sort of thing. So the, 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 verses, the, first line, the first verses are essentially John thinking, is it your do we look for another? And then the answer that Jesus gave to John was, look at what's happening. This is my word coming to pass, so you don't have to worry, is it true or not? It's actually coming to pass. And the idea of the song is that God interprets his own word by bringing it to pass. So people can fuss and argue and everything over it, but God just goes ahead and does it anyway. And those that recognise it just enjoy it coming to pass. So that's what the song's about. Um, now if I get it wrong, forgive me, because I don't really know it that well. And this song we, was written about the same time as Jubilee, but I didn't really put it together, so it's kind of like its brother. So I kind of stole a few little strum patterns and that from that one. It, it came at the same time. It kind of overlapped. Um, it's quite a fast song. If I get it wrong, I'm just going to stop and carry on. I'll just do what I do. Don't worry about me. Okay. And I, I might hand it, if I can't play properly, my, when I did flooring, my elbow went funny and I, I can't actually hold the keys down very strong on this hand, the chords. So, <laughs> yeah. I, it was worse on Wednesday or the last day I played, I could hardly push the strings down. I'm surprised I made it through. But we'll see how we go. Is it you or do we look for another? I can hear John say His eagle eyes were getting clouded over Seemed to have lost his way John's disciples went to Jesus Told him all that John had said Jesus sent them with the message and this is what he said go tell john that the lame they walk go tell john that the blind they see go tell john that the dead are raised the captives they have all been granted liberty Go tell John when my prophet speaks Believe it, receive it in your heart You don't have to understand it It stands all alone and I'll interpret it by bringing it to pass You don't have to understand it It stands all alone and I'll interpret it by bringing it to pass is it him or do we look for another? I have heard some say Is this Elijah that Malachi spoke of? Are we in Bible days? Search the scriptures Jesus taught us And there they testify of me Did not I tell you I'd send Elijah, he would restore all things. Tell my bride that the light is here. Tell my bride that the book's not sealed. Tell my bride that the word is open. The mysteries of the seven seals have been revealed. Tell my bride when my prophet speaks, believe it. Receive it in your heart You don't have to understand it It stands all alone And I'll interpret it by bringing it to pass You don't have to understand it It stands all alone And I'll interpret it by bringing it to pass Do tell my bride Oh, tell my bride that the light is here Tell my bride that the book's not sealed Tell my bride that the word is open The mysteries of the seven seals have been revealed 
tell my bride when my prophet speaks believe it receive it in your heart you don't have to understand it it stands all alone and i'll interpret it by bringing it to pass you don't have to understand it it stands all alone and i'll interpret it by bringing it to pass Competition is strong and the challenge is there to have that 52 songs uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Andy is uh, now contributing as well, is a uh, contributing main member. So I think uh, oh, Christine is technically as well, so I'm behind that. Eh? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get there. It's time to worship. Let's, uh, let's all stand. Let's get in that, <clears throat> in that place where, where the Lord wants you. Open up your heart. Leave everything, like I said, leave everything at the altar. Let's, um, let's get quiet. Let's give Him His glory. Amen. Let's praise Him. Let's worship Him. And um, don't hold back. Open up. If you need to pray, if you need to let everything uh, out in the open, get all those skeletons out. The, the challenges that we face today is, is hard and it's, and it's real. And, but He is the light and we will turn to Him. We know who is victorious. We know who's already won that battle for us. We've got to stand on His Word. There's a preacher that said, um, when all your favorite preachers are gone, when all your favorite musicians are gone, worship leaders and everything, you need to go back to where they came from, what they stood on, and that's the Bible. That's the word. And he said, master it. Mm. He amplified it and he exclaimed it. He said, master it. And um, I'm very guilty to go and rely on, on a preacher out there and go and listen at a sermon and, um, and not dig into the word that he's been given to us mm. at that moment. Um, so yes go and stand on the word go and stand on the truth um, he's, he's, he's given it for, for us for a reason mm. Amen. number 72 in Christ alone my hope is found he is my life my strength my song this cornerstone the solid rock, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comfort, my all in all, here in the life of Christ. of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God has satisfied. Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world that darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave He rose again and then we stand in victory, since curse has passed his grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No 
guilt and lies, no fear and death. This is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to a new bread. Jesus who burns my destiny, the power of man, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till it returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my Last first I stand, no fear in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of Never pluck me from his hand till he returns and calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Amen. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs after you. As the deep panteth for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire. You are 
to you this morning we also pray for the youth camp we also pray that they've got strength and they've got wisdom and insight and your love to uh, to bring forth your word may they enjoy every moment on that camp and we pray and we plead that they be uh, be returned safely keep them safe on the roads holy spirit bring your angels and make them the the drivers of the car Thank you for, for your goodness. Thank you that we can go across the country and spread your word and, 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 and be in your love that you've, you've given us. Thank you that everyone's pulling in the same direction. Thank you that we can, we can feel we're on that final point, that final stage. May we pull harder. May we give all our energy towards you. Thank you for your mercy and grace. And again, thank you for Brother, Brother Isaac that's that's um, prepared and in obedience step forward to, to bring us the word of this hour and, and the message for this moment. We pray your love over him and his family. They are a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. Um, well, you're standing, we just um, take out your Bibles and we will read from 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 down to about 57.
Okay, First Corinthians chapter um, 15 verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. We'll just leave it there. We'll just pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your word. Lord, and as Brother Branham said many times before he would start preaching, Lord, he would say, let's just turn to the word. Because, Lord, we know that your words won't fail, Lord, but our words fail many times. They always fail. But we're so glad that we have your word that's an anchor for our soul. That's a a light to our path. Lord, it leads us and it guides us and it makes us sure, Lord, as we go through life and we get more responsibilities, Lord, and we get... We begin to have to lead people. We realize, Lord, that we lead the wrong way and we lead into failure and misery, but we are so happy that we can follow your leadership and follow your word and it gives us courage, Lord, to press on, knowing, Lord, that if we follow the truth and if we follow you, that it's eternal and that it's strong and secure. Amen. So we just thank you for being here in our midst this morning. I just pray you continue to bless service, bless those that can't make it. Just pray another blessing upon the youth Amen. camp, Lord, and the, um, some of us here have got an invested interest in that with our children being there. And I just pray you bless not only our children, but all the children, the young people that go. Lord, may they meet you in a powerful way. May their lives be changed. May it not just be a, um, just an emotional decision as, as they get sort of worked up with their friends and that. But may, it, may there be something just sink down in their soul, Lord, that would change their life. And those that are already changed, just may there be something more for them to to give them strength and to keep them set on the path of righteousness. So we just want to commit ourselves to you and we thank you for this um, good day and we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for the victory in Jesus Christ. Praise this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can take your seats um, this morning. Okay, the subject that I want to speak on this morning is called land. Land. And... It's a funny scripture to read and try and tie it into land, but it does eventually end up to be to do with land, the scripture that we just read. And I just find it fascinating that the subject of land, this, essentially the six inches of soil that sits underneath our feet here, you can almost tie the whole gospel into it. It's an amazing thing, and I just love how the Lord has made creation and has made everything that if we would just stop and look around and take care and observe, that we can see the fingerprints of God through everything. And I'm not overly mechanically minded, but there are some people here that I know that are, and they see like a maybe a vehicle, and they appreciate how the vehicle works and the mechanics of it, and then they appreciate even more when they open up the hood and they can see just how wonderful it's made and how this part works and that part and that works there and there and it all works together. Amen. I don't really do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I like the Word of God, not that they don't. But I just enjoy how you see it and it looks so good. Then you go and look into it and you see how every part fits all together and works perfectly. Amen. It never ceases to thrill my soul every time you might think it's such a simple thing and you start looking into it and you realize this is complex, but it all works together so well. And land has been one of those little studies that I've done that I've just really enjoyed. So can you bring up the first slide there, Brother Andy? I don't have a clicker, sorry, so maybe I might do Brother Tim's thing. We've got the... Yeah, what did Brother um, Alray call it? The finger technology. We've got that. Okay, that's our scripture there. Um, next one. I want to just quickly run over what I want to cover. Seems like a lot, so maybe I'll go fast. <laughs> so, so, and this is where I'm going with this. This is one of those ones where it just, it's not really just a mismatch of information like my other one. It's kind of got a sequence of events that it goes through. And we're going to first talk about the principle of natural and, natural 
and spiritual land. So we're going between the two. So we're going to take the natural, then we're going to take the spiritual as we go through. So it's going to go back and forth, okay? We're going to go through the first principle that natural or spiritual land isn't owned, period. It doesn't get owned by man. Um, then, then we're going to look into God's ownership of all this natural and spiritual land. And then we're going to look at a natural and spiritual promised land. And then we're going to look at surrendering of governance of a natural and spiritual land. And then we're going to look at possessing and subduing natural and spiritual land. Sounds complicated, but it's not. And then the natural and spiritual land passing away, and then there's a new natural and spiritual land. So it's all just talking about land, but it's just different cycles that the land goes through and that we go through because we are the same. So bring on the next one, brother. Oh. <laughs> this is how I started to get this one. This is, um, there's a little plaque at um, Ricky Orangi by the, if you've been to Brother John's house on the Carpety Coast, and as you turn into his road, there's a little rest area there with a picnic table. And it's got a few apple trees and it's got a church across the road. And then there's, they've got this um, little stand there. And we went there with the children the other week. And I just read this bit of information. You can't read it, but I'll just read it out, some of it. And it says that Ricky Orangi translated into English means the gate or gateway to heaven. So John doesn't realize this, but he lives up in there, so John lives in heaven. <laughs> Tell him that. He'll, he'll enjoy that. He's more spiritual than the rest of us, obviously. <laughs> but it just talks about the history of Ricky Orangi. And then it says there was a, there was a, a Maori man called Moa Puku. And he was under attack in another area, and he went down to Ricky Orangi, and he basically claimed it for his own. And later on, when the settlers, the Europeans arrived, he ended up selling half of the land that he owned. And then um, they built a dairy farm and different things there as the time went on. And then in about the 60s, more activity was happening in Waikano, so the, the place virtually shut down. But go, oh. Thanks. Here's the plaque here, and here's St. Andrew's Church was built in 1907. I think they had their first service there. This was back in the days where when you settled a place, you built a church. Yeah, yeah. That was what you did. Um, it doesn't happen anymore. When they settled a place, they built a stadium or something like that, a sports stadium or a movie theater or something, but that was this. Now, it got, I got thinking about the fact that this man went in there, took this land, and then he owned the land, then he sold it, and it got me thinking about... He, the fact that this man never really owned anything. Okay? So that's where I got this idea. Go. Okay. So now the principle of, of natural land, land not being owned. Who owns land or has owned land? Okay. So you don't really own it. Okay? You don't own it. Now, I'll show you why. And this is an important principle in this study. Brother Andy looks at a property that he likes. And he thinks, oh, I want to buy that land. So he goes and he, he um, puts in his bid for it. He gets it. Then he does his, fills out his agreement to purchase this land. He fills that out. And then he purchases, pays the money. Then he purchases his land. And then, next one. Then Brother Andy owns a nice barn house. He thinks he does, okay? But Brother Andy has only purchased that land under the governance of the New Zealand government. So the New Zealand government has come in here and they have essentially taken ownership, uh, taken governance of this land and they have said, they have made a law that says, you may buy from us the right to occupy a piece of land. So they've formed a law that says you can now, if you go through these channels, you can buy this land, you can, you can buy the rights to occupy a piece of land, okay? Brother Andy doesn't own it. He just bought the rights to occupy it under the current govern, government, okay? He doesn't own it. Now, let's say it's 1939, 1942, sorry, and the things didn't go so well for the Allied forces. Go to the next one. Oh. And the Japanese turn up here, and Andy had bought his land in 1939, and he was all set to raise his family. Now, if things hadn't gone as well as what they went in World War II and the Japanese made it all the way here and they took over New Zealand, they would take over the governance of this country. And then Brother Andy's agreement that he had with the current government, his piece of paper that he owns the land, would now be 
if they decided null and void, you no longer own this piece of land because the people that you bought the right to, to occupy it don't have the rights to give it to you anymore. So, so if governance changes, then the land that we might think that we own, we don't own anymore because we never did, did own it in the first place. Now, the principle of land is, this is very important, it always goes to the strongest person that wants it the most. Always. Now, the, many countries could take this land away from the New Zealand government, but they don't want to. They say, you can keep that. But if they wanted to, there would be many countries that could come here and take it from the New Zealand government, and then all of our agreements that we have with the New Zealand government would be done. That's the principle of land. Now, um, sometimes, no, I'll just go, next one, I'll stay on track. As we go through this, it just becomes more and more clear. Now, we are spiritual land. Okay, we've got natural land. Now, we'll go to the spiritual. We are spiritual land. That's the principle of this whole thing. I just like this picture because I like old pictures. And I like people, hard-working men and women that look after the, the family barn and that. I just like it. So I put this picture there. It hasn't got much to do with spiritual land, but it makes you feel good, doesn't it? makes you feel like wholesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now, this is just my scripture on spiritual land. Jesus talked about the sower that went forth to sow. He, he typed, he said, a sower went forth to sow and he sowed seeds into land. And then he ended up saying, well, you're, you're the land. And then the seed that got sown was the word, so it got into your land. Okay, so that's, that's just to show that we are spiritual land. You know, and if we receive the, if our ground is ready and we receive the word into our land, then it brings forth fruit. But other people, the seed comes and then other things come in and take away that seed so that seed word of God never grows in their land. Okay, so, so we are spiritual land. That's the scripture here. Now, the same principle applies to spiritual land. Think about this one. Spiritual land, our spiritual land, we don't own it. We govern it, someone else occupies it, but we don't own it. Okay, just, just like natural land, we don't own natural land. We just we either govern it and we own it, uh, we occupy it, or we just occupy it. In some cases, in a more simplistic um, system of governance, where they don't have a government essentially, someone could walk into a piece of land and say, I'm going to own all this piece around, or govern all this piece here, and I'm going to occupy it. He's the governor and the occupier, all wrapped into one. But as we get more complex... We form governments and they work it out. But essentially, our spiritual land is the same. We don't own our spiritual land. We govern it and we occupy it. Uh, we don't occupy it. Sorry, someone else does. But it has to be occupied. Every piece of land in this world, somebody has, somebody has governorship over it. And even if they don't use it, there are some people that actually could occupy it if they wanted to. Next. Now, the next step that we have is now the principle that God actually owns all land. He owns the whole lot. Yep. Now we talk about ownership. This is ownership. So the scripture here says, it's a little bit dark for me to see, but I can't see the psalm. I think it's 24-7. says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yep. To me, that sounds like ownership. Yep. So he's saying, I own this. Okay. And I like the, love this one in Isaiah 66, one says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you have built unto me and where is the place of my rest? He calls the earth his footstool. He owns it. He can call it what he wants to. Yeah. We call it home. Amen. He calls it footstool. <laughs> okay. Now, spiritual land. The next part of that verse is, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So not only has he got ownership of all the natural land, he's also saying, I own all the people that dwell in that, on the earth as well. And that includes all the spiritual land. So now, with this basis of ownership, when we own something, like, like if I own this battery, I can actually own this battery. I can't own land, but I can own this battery, probably simply because I can put it in my pocket and take it with me wherever I go. 
and hang on to it. Me having ownership of this battery means that I can do whatever I like with this battery. If I like to keep it, I keep it. If I don't want it, I can throw it away. But you can't tell me what I can and can't do with this battery if it's my battery. I have it. I decide what I want to do with this battery. If I've got 10 batteries and I only want two batteries, I can just get rid of the other eight batteries. That's the principle of ownership. It's a very important principle. Because that's why you get scriptures like 2 Timothy 2.20 says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour. God's saying, I want these ones, but I don't want those ones. And, and Paul says, who are we to revile against God or speak against God? So why, is you, why have you made me thus? Or why have you done this? Why have you done that? He can do what he wants with the things that he owns. Amen. He doesn't have to ask us, would you mind if I did this with my property? Amen. He does all things according to the counsel of his own will. Amen. Now, that's why also Romans 9.13, he says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. I want this one. I don't want that one. Our minds have to just accept it because that's the way that ownership, that's the principle of ownership. Yeah. And we don't own ourselves. Yeah. I'll even give you a funny thought. You look at, you, you think this is my body. <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is, it's not yours, it's your parents. They lent it to you to dwell in. You think about it, you didn't even have a body. They lent you part of their body to live in. This body's not even mine. That's how frail the human being is. I thank God that we serve an eternal, powerful God that we can trust in. Amen. Okay. Now, with this idea of ownership, God owns all this. He owns all this land, okay? He sees the whole lot. Just like I might own a lot of batteries. But the thing about God is, and I love this this thought here that God looks at all this natural land and he said you know what there's a whole lot of land there but you know what he would have looked all around it all over all the continents and the, the mountains the dry areas the cold areas the green areas the brown dark areas barren parched areas and he would have thought I'll tell you what I want. I want that piece there. That's what he said. Of all this, don't want it. All I want is that piece. I want that piece. I want that piece. I want that piece. That's what he said. Go to... The Okay. God met Abraham. We know the story that he, 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 he gave a promise to Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant with you. There's this piece of land here, and I'm going to give it to you because I will actually want that land for myself. And I want you there to go and possess it, and I want that land. And that's why we call that a promised land. He had a promise. It was now a promised land. Now, something happened the moment that God spoke to Abraham and said, I'm going to give you that land. Something happened that very moment that God spoke that to Abraham. And that was this. God issued now a challenge to the current governance of that land. Because that land was under governance and it was under occupation. He issued a challenge to the present governance of that land saying, I'm after you, and I'm going to take over that land. Because there was a governance there that had it under control. And there were people there that were occupying it, and they were quite happy. But the minute that God made a promise to Abraham, that same minute had to be, I'm issuing a challenge to you, and I'm going to come and get it. Had to be. Okay? This is not part of my sermon, but I just love this scripture here. And Psalm 137 verse 1 says, By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. 
We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us myrrh, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. There was something more than just a promise. It was a, a, a deep feeling of something inside these people that that was their land. And when they were out of it, something in them stirred. And that's like the anyone that there's a promise over their life. When you're out of that, there's something in you that's desiring it so much because there's a promise there. They said, where we sat down, we wept when we remembered Zion. We, we remember what that promise was. So it's more than just... A word, it actually makes people act a certain way. Yeah. Of all the different land he could have chosen, all these different regions, he just said, I want that piece. That's my piece. All these other countries, people, keep it. I want that piece. A promised land. Okay, now we get to the spiritual aspect of it. We are land. Okay. Of all the different people that there are, all the different people, I want that person. I want that land. God's made a promise to us. I want that land. I know there's a lot of other land, but I want that land. I want that land. That's what I want. That's the land that I want. Why don't you take it all? I just want that land. I just want that one. God does what he wants with what he owns. I want that one. I want that one. We are then now a promised land. Now, the same thing happened. The, the moment that promise went forth for us, I want that land, the same thing happened. God issued a challenge to the current governance of this land. I'm after you. And the current occupiers, I'm after you. <laughs> I'm after you. I'm after that piece of land. So you guys enjoy being there while you can because I'm coming after it to get it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the same thing that he said. That's the promise. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I'm so glad that God issued that challenge towards the current occupier of this land. And you know what? You'll be surprised who it actually is. We know it's the enemy, but there's, there's another funny thought there. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> Next one. Okay, now. Now, we get to this point, the idea of surrender. Surrender of land. Okay. I'm going to talk about this one first. This is the Japanese in World War II. They had ideas to take over the world, to, to take over a certain part of the, of the Pacific. And for a while there, they did quite well. But the Allied forces obviously did better, and they kept on. They fought, and they were essentially fighting over who has governance of the Pacific, of the land. There was a fight for governance, and two major powers both wanted governance of this land. And they fought and fought and fought for years. And no doubt each different army was strategizing every month and every year that went by. They were strategizing to, to get governance of this land. And in the end, the Japanese didn't have enough strength in them, either money or armed forces, whatever it was. They eventually ran out of strength to continue fighting for governance of the land. They were worn down year after year after year because their whole country was at war, whereas a country like America was at, and essentially at peace so they could manufacture vehicles and tanks and planes and everything and just keep shipping these things over to the Pacific and keep shipping young men across because they weren't being attacked in their country so they could prosper. And eventually the Japanese saw that their predicament was dire and after the... Um, Americans dropped two nuclear bombs on them. 
they just realized we, can't, we cannot continue the fight for governance of this land. We give up. And the deal was with the Americans, the deal was you, the Americans said to the Japanese, you must give us a full and unconditional surrender. Sign here. You surrender with no strings attached and you cede all your governance over to us. And that's what they did. And this was the signing of the paper here. This was Japan, unconditional surrender. This was them um, absolutely giving up governance of their country to the Allied forces, to the, mainly the Americans. Now, when they did that, that meant that every agreement, we talked about this at the start, every agreement that, that, the, that any Japanese man had had with his current government, any agreement that a, that a weapons manufacturing company had had with the government, all of that stuff has stopped. The agreement doesn't stand anymore because there's a new governance in town. The old governance is gone. And there's a new governance that now calls the shots. Now, I'll venture to say that there would have been some stubborn Japanese men and women and families in there that weren't going to give up. Hey, don't we know that in our life? Sometimes there's some stubborn things. But the reality is, that you, don't, you no longer have governance of this land. So any agreement you think you had or you think you can do, it's gone. Any occupier of that land that, that thinks differently, he doesn't have rights anymore like what he used to have because there's a new governance in the land. There's a new governance. Now, that weapons factory may continue to think he can make them. I'll just keep making them. But he's got the whole of the Allied force now. Instead of them attacking the whole of the Pacific, the whole of the Allied force is going to attack his factory, and he won't stand. He doesn't have any chance. It's like that in our lives too. When governance changes in our life, there's still stubborn things that think they can hang on, but the reality is there's a new governance, Amen. and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this is the Japanese. Now, bring on the next one. Oh, I just put this in because I, this is one of the stubborn men. <laughs> I showed this at the Bible study. This man fought for 29 years after World War II in um, the Philippines. He didn't realize the war had stopped. He thought they were still at war. So he waged his war against the Allied forces for another 29 years. <laughs> he wouldn't accept that the war was finished. A few people met him and tried to tell him the war's over. He wouldn't accept it. He thought, you're lying. You're trying to deceive me. You're trying to you know, get me from giving up the Philippines. <laughs> so in the end, his um, commander had to travel there personally and, say, and, and issue him orders to say, you can now stop fighting. So he fought for 29 years. Sometimes you get stubborn wow. devils that just think they can hang around and keep going. But their, their rights to occupy, their rights to govern are done when Jesus Christ takes over our life. Next one. Okay, now, I want to bring this in just a wee bit to try and think about governance. Okay, now, our land gets occupied but it also gets governed. Now, you just look at the New Zealand system. We've got governance, then you've got occupation. And we, if, if we buy a piece of property, we buy the rights to occupy it from the government. Okay? If the government thinks, yes, you're okay, you can buy it and occupy it. Now, with our spiritual land, we don't actually own it. But because we've got free moral agency, we... Um, govern our land, okay? Now, people say, well, the devil does. Well, we actually govern our land. The issue that we have is when we're born, our governance, the only governance that we know, how would I put this? We're a carnal, fallen being, okay? So, so, the, so the way we govern is from that carnal, fallen man that hates God. That's the facts of it. This carnal man hates God. It's enmity with God. It never can come into agreement with God. It always has to fight against God. That's our natural carnal man. And that's what Paul says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Well, the carnal governance is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. 
So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so here we are. We're born with this carnal governance. Now, the next thing we do when we're like that, we set up occupiers in our land. People come and ask us, can I occupy it? Well, because we're fighting against God, we've got a common enemy that fights against God too, which is Satan and all his demons. So they come in and they can easily make agreements with us. I'll have this piece of land here and occupy it. Yeah, sure. I'll have this piece. Yep, yep, yep. So we let all these devils occupy our land because that's all the carnal man knows. He's not going to say to God, come and occupy my land. He's not going to say that because he, he's enmity with God. So, so the only occupiers we end up with yep. are devils. <laughs> That's why you leave a little child on their own, yep. leave them to their own devices. They will grow up essentially evil without any guidance. And a man, if he doesn't have any guidance of light, will end up essentially evil. Yep. Now, we've, got, we've been tamed in a way by the word of God within our laws and things like that, but in man is inherently evil. That's why before the flood, they got to a point where God said of the people, Every thought in his heart is evil continually. Meaning every part of his land, there's just devils taking up the whole thing. There is no God in the land whatsoever, in, in their land. Okay, now that's, and our, our carnal will is the governor, so we've let all these things happen. So, the, the, and this is a funny thought, but the challenge that God issues when he says, I want that land, I want this land, Who's the issue when he says, I'm going to come and take it over? He's got to take over the governance first. Yeah. Then he can tell the occupiers where to go. Yeah. He doesn't just hit at the occupiers. He's got to take over the governance. Yeah. Now, who's the governance? Me. Me. My carnal nature's governing it. Yeah. <laughs> so who does God start to... Now, I might say fight against, but I don't mean to destroy us. But who does he have to battle against? Yeah. Me. Yeah. My stubborn yeah. carnal nature that hates God. He's got to start to orchestrate things. And we wonder why sometimes in our life things are starting to change. They're not as easy as what they used to be. Things are happening. Why? God's battling against us. He starts his war against us carnal nature. It hates him. He says, I've got to get you out of the way. I've got to defeat you. Because I want that land. I've got, to, I've got to take over governance of that land. Because I want that land. So God begins this, this fight, this battle against me, my carnal nature that hates him. And he starts to orchestrate the circumstances. The things start to get hard, but we, we fight on anyway and we press on and we, we battle. But then there comes to a point where, and we're all come down different roads, but there comes to a point where we say, it just gets all too much and we say, I just can't take this anymore. Now, a lot of the times, depending on our nature, it might be just by love. We just think, I give up. I can't take this anymore. But however we are, God knows how to best defeat this enemy. And it's at a certain point we say, Lord, I give up. I surrender. I know I'm the current governor of this land, and I know I've made all these agreements with all these occupiers and sold them all this land, and they're all happy dwelling there. But the, the persistent force of love of God that's coming against us eventually overwhelms us and we give up and we say Lord I surrender now just like what the Japanese to the Americans were there's only one agreement that can be made that's a unconditional surrender God doesn't say if we say look I'll, I'll surrender this much but I still want to do this okay then let's keep battling against it Amen. against you he'll keep battling until you finally say until he has to drop a couple of nuclear bombs you finally say, look, that's it, we've had enough. <laughs> You'll keep doing it till, he say, till, he, till we give up. Amen. He did the same thing with Paul. Uh, Paul was battling, battling, battling him. Even God said to him, Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. <laughs> this battle you're waging is hard. <laughs> and then Paul, Paul gave up. Paul surrendered. Now, this is why eventually... When we surrender, we say, I cede all control over to the new governance. And who is that new governance? It's Jesus Christ. I, I cede all control over to the new governance of this land. And then essentially, we become under that governance. 
Now, this is why Paul said, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. It's, I'm not governing this land anymore. I'm now a prisoner. I'm under this new governance. He's surrendered. But he agreed to it because he, we've got free moral agency. He agreed to it. I agree to surrender. And yet there was a force against us that actually wanted our land. Because remember, the most powerful force will get the land that wants it. That's the nature of land. There's a fight and the most powerful one. God's always the most powerful. He will always get his own. All that the Father hath given me will come. Every battle that I wage, I'll win for the land. So now Paul becomes a prisoner. I'll make it through this. Now, you have then got the situation now, as we move on through the process of this land, let's go back to the natural. Now, um, we're going to start from when the, the children of Israel were in the land. So they crossed over Jordan. They're in the land now. They've, they've, they, it's a type of surrender. They're in there, the Holy Ghost. They're in the land. Now, there, was, there are going to be three things that are going to hinder this new governance, the full possession, taking full possession of the whole land. There's going to be three things that will hinder it. Okay? Sorry about the small words. I didn't realize how small it would be. But the first... Hang on. So the, the point is, you're in the land, the new governance has come in, and it wants to take, get rid of all the current occupiers and make the land fruitful. Because the promise was... Here is this land here. You're going to possess it, plus it's a land flowing with milk and honey. You're not just going to possess it. You're going to get a lot of benefits from it. Now, when you think about milk and honey, those are awesome types or components to speak of when you talk about land because if you think about milk, well, to have milk, you need uh, sheep and cows and goats and things like that and camels. Well, to have that, you need pasture. So then to have pasture, you need nice, not a lot of land. So that then comes the milk. Now to have honey, you need flowers, you need vegetables, you need all those sorts of things to have the honey. So they might be two small things, but it shows that if you can get those two things out of a land, your land is under control and it's bringing forth what it should be. If you don't get milk or honey from a land, then you obviously your land is covered in bush and scrub and it's not producing anything. So if you get milk and honey... So now the promise was you'll possess a land, but it will be flowing with milk and honey. You'll actually bring forth fruit from it. Okay, There's, There were two things with the promise, two components to it. Now the first thing that would stop things from happening are a lack of faith in the promise. The second thing uh, that would stop a full possession of getting this would be other inhabitants. Because remember, there's other people that have made the agreement with the old government. They're all still there. They haven't gone anywhere. Yeah. They're all still there. When, when, the, when the agreement was signed with the Japanese, all the soldiers were all still on their battlefronts. They were everywhere. They were all still there. They didn't go away. They all stayed there. And the devil's such a stubborn guy that he won't even move. He'll just say, no, I'm staying here. You've got no right to. I don't care. Make me leave. That's what he's like. Yeah. They're all still there. Other inhabitants, when they crossed over into the land, all the other inhabitants were all still there. Some of them didn't even know the agreement had been made. That, you know what, this land is... Now, change governance. Now, the third thing is a, the curse in the land. That's a very important factor to take note of in the natural. There's a curse actually in the land itself. Even though it's a promised land, it was still cursed. It was still going to just bring forth. Now, let's just read this. Um, Joshua 14, 11 says, this is Caleb speaking, and this is talking about his faith in the promise. This was his attitude which caused him to move forward and conquer. His attitude was, this is after they've been in land for quite a, about 30, 40 years, he said, as, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my, uh, sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spoke in the days, in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Amalekites or Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Sorry for not reading that well, but the attitude was, 
God's made a promise and I'm going to go and get it. He didn't hold back. He said, I can do it because the promise has been made, so I'm going to press on and go and get it. That's the only attitude that works in, in Christianity. God made the promise, I'm going to go and I'm going to get it. It doesn't work if you say, well, I've, he's made the promise, but I don't know if I really can and all that. That doesn't work. <laughs> Caleb said, God made a promise, I'm going to press on and go and get it. Yeah. Okay, so, so if, if, because if you don't have that, that's going to, that would have hindered the children of Israel from actually possessing it if they had a lack of faith in the promise. Because if you have faith in it, you'll then go out and act on that faith. Okay? You press on. That's, what a, that's why we're called soldiers. Why? Because we fight. We press on. Like Brother Ed was talking about, you know, we, we've had a hard week, but we're here. Yeah. What do you think? We're not going to be here? No, we're here. Because yeah. that's how we operate. That's what a soldier does. He presses on. Now, number two, other inhabitants. And number three, curse in the land. I want to read Exodus 23, 29. God said to the children of Israel, I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. So now he's talking about these two all together, right? Because he's saying, if I just drive them all out, there is still this curse in the land that if I take out the current occupants, the land will just get overgrown, the vineyards will break down, yep. the, the animals will all run away, the plants, flowers will all die, the wild beasts will move in, the vines will grow everywhere, and when you turn up there, it'll be a mess. It'd be worthless land because it's, it's not under control. He had, to, he had to actually drive the inhabitants out as fast as, only as fast as the, ch the children of Israel could go in there and take possession and occupation of it to keep it under control. It's a very important principle because, oh, we've got the land. Well, if, if God drove them all out and they stood on just this side of Jordan, the land would have been worthless to them even though they had it all. Now, it's possible that a Christian sometimes gets to that state where he's got the land, but it's just overrun and worthless to him. We don't want to get to that state. But this is very important to our spiritual state of land. This is a, you understand that one quite easily? Yeah. Yep, good, okay. That's a long quote there, that I, but I want to read it. <clears throat> now, this is now talking about the spiritual promised land. And I really want to read this quote, so just bear with me. This is Brother Brown talking now from a spiritual perspective of possessing that land. Okay? They've never found a better way for a baby to get what it wants than to cry for it. Could you give him a bell and say, Junior, you're only three days old, but now when you want, when you want your bottle, raise up this bell and ring it. See if it works. It don't work. The baby cries for what he wants. That's God's provided way. The louder you cry, don't whip that the little fellow, he's only following God's provided way. He wants something, that's right. That's the only way he knows to call his mother, scream for it, cry for it, that's right. God recommends this for his children. God recommends this for his believing children, he did. Not intellectual speeches, not some great theology to teach. He wants you to cry for your needs, that's right, cry for it. If you're too stiff and starchy, you'll never get it. If you're ready to limber yourself up a little and cry, God will give it to you. He likes to hear his children cry. Cry your needs to God, God wants it. That's his provided way. Cry out for it. That's the way the baby cries. That's the way he wants you to cry. Cry, how long? How long does, does a baby cry? Until he gets satisfied. And that's the way the believing Christians to do. God's child. If you see that God made the promise, don't give it up. Cry out till it's answered. Cry out till you see God vindicate his word. When God vindicates his word and proves it's here, then you don't have to cry no more. Amen. You got it. Walk away and thank him for it. Until you do that, scream out till you get it. I like that. Persistent, holding on. Not a hybrid plant, not one that has to be babied and petted and packed around. Christians are real, genuine, born articles of God. They fight for their position and fight till they're finished on this earth. Every move of it is a fight. God told Moses that he'd give him the land. He told Joshua, every place the sole of your foot treads that I've given you. They had to fight for every inch of it. So do we fight for every, every inch of it. It isn't something to be babied and petted and around like that and say, well, I'll take you over there, see what you think about it. Then you pass your opinion. That's no way to come. Come with a determination. Come that you're going to stay there till it's over. Stay there until God answers and vindicates. A man that believes in God can see the presence of God, feel the presence of God, sense the presence of God and know he's here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So now he's saying, 
when you turn up to this land, go for it. Just be a madman almost. Seriously, that's the way we're supposed to be. Get it all. Don't, don't sit back and think, oh, no, be aggressive. Amen. When there's a fight, it takes aggression. Right. Now, I know it takes strategy, but at some point it takes aggression. It takes determination yes. to fight. And that, that, the full possession of the land, now, once we're in it, receive the Holy Ghost, full possession, it will hinder us if we don't do that. Yeah. That's one of the main things that will hinder us. We don't actually have enough determination to go and get it. We can sit back and just leave it all. We can, and I believe we'll still be saved. But that's not what we're called to do. Amen. Our captain has said, go, move Amen. forward. Amen. That's what we've been called to do. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, the second thing that will hold us, that could, could hold us back, is now these devil strongholds. Now, what they are, is they are all the agreements and everything that we'd made before the new governance came in. And all complexes and ideas and thought patterns and everything that the devil had put in that he'd been established, that he'd established in the land. Hey, maybe he found out that God was after us, so what's he going to do? Build the walls bigger. Build them bigger. Do this, do that in their life. Mess up their life as much as they can because I can see the army approaching from the north. <laughs> so these, all these strongholds are there. But they don't have any right to be there. Once the new governance comes in, they don't have any right to stay. They don't have, they're only there because they choose to be there, but they don't have a right to stay there. They all have to go because there's a new governance in place. Now, this is an important one here, the curse in our flesh that we have to recognize is that In our flesh, if we just get left, our flesh will start to grow, get overgrown. Just like land, if you leave land, there's, some, there's a curse in the actual land itself. That if you just leave it, it will just get overgrown. And the only way that you can ever get that land under control is not to try and teach it or anything, but is to subdue it. See that weed you're coming out? I subdue you. Have dominion over it. Subdue it. That's the only way you can never get that under control. Amen. This is why Paul says, but I keep my body under subjection. Lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. There is no place in the Bible where, you can, where it tells us to train our flesh. The only thing that it ever says to us is subdue it. Subdue it. Because within this flesh, it's cursed. This flesh is actually still cursed. The land is actually still cursed. It's still cursed. So, so God actually has to, as much as he wants to throw out the enemies in our life, he has to make sure that we can actually go and subdue that piece of land that we gain as he throws it out. Yeah. If he just threw it all out and we don't know how to subdue that land and, and keep it under control, it will just get overgrown and we will be in a worse state than we were when we started. Yeah. Okay? So if, you, if there's, make sure you recognize what is your flesh. I don't want to go to church. Hey, that's just your flesh. Yes. Subdue it. Amen. You know? Subdue it. Amen. Keep it under subjection. There's these thoughts that you might think. Or you might get in a, in a place where you start to not focus on the Lord as much and you start to think these certain ways and you'll think you're really bad. No, that's just a few weeds coming up from your, from your carnal flesh coming up. Yeah. Don't let the devil condemn you with that. That's just these weeds coming back up. Yes. Just subdue it again. So no, down. That's not me. You don't, that's the old government. You don't have governance here anymore. Do you remember that? You were defeated. The old governance is gone. Because sometimes it throws Christians off, you know, they, or new Christians, they think it's them. It's, it's just the old governance trying to rise up. And in him, and he's trying to make agreements. Hey, if you, get, if you go too far, then he'll start making these old, forming old agreements again. Have you seen that backslide? As they backslide, then they form old agreements with all these devils again. You know, that's what happens. But always... Daily, surrender your life to the governance of the Lord Jesus. Amen. But this, this curse in our flesh will never go away until either the rapture or death. So just subdue it. We're called to subdue it. We're called to lay hold on the promise and move forward by faith. We're called to 
possess the land, so be believe and, and, and face any devil there is, and then when we take the land, just possess it and subdue it. And in that order. Next. What have I got? Okay, I'm, I'm going to... I'm almost there with this one. Because I don't want to leave it like it's all just this hard fight, slog. Yeah. Because the land goes through one more, two more cycles before we get to the real promised land that we're after. Maybe. Now, this natural earth that we have, that we see, in it is this curse. It's just a cursed land. But there's two stages that this cursed land is going to go through before it's in its perfect state again. And the first thing is, this top six inches of soil, Brother Brown talks about, it, is going to be totally burned. Or maybe more than six. He said it'll go down so deep that it will, every bit of any sin or anything that's in this particular globe, he's going to just burn it. Burn it right down. And then he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. But he said it's going to be this same one. Because I often thought about, when I get my new body, will I look like me? You know, it's a new body. So maybe I won't look like me. You won't recognize me. Well, I look at the type here and I think, well, it's going to be the same earth. Yeah. It's not a different earth. It's the same earth. Yeah. This earth is going to go through a process where the curse of sin that's in it at the moment that we have to combat and fight against is eventually going to be done away with. Yeah. That whole curse of sin, God said, I curse the ground for your sake. That curse is going to be gone. He's going to do away with that curse and we're going to get a new earth. See, um, and that, there's plenty of scriptures about that. It says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I just want to read this um, quote here from Brother Branham. It says, There you are. That's the word of the Lord. He promised that it must come. And now if you notice how this happens, it's beautiful how God does it. The bride goes forth with the groom, and then after that, the wicked is burned with unquenchable fire, and the world has been purified, reproduces itself. Everything has to do that. has to go through a state of purification. The volcanic will break forth in this... And that great last time, the world will burst and bleach and go forth. And all those cesspools of sin and all that's upon the earth will be molded into nothing. It'll burn with such a fervent heat that it'll be like the bleach that sends the color of the ink back to its original creation. So will the fire from God be so hot that it'll turn every filthy thing back to its condition again. When Satan and all sin is burned up and everything. And then she'll come forth as beautiful as she was in the Garden of Eden. That's right. Now he's talking about this natural land that we see. Every bit of sin that's been occupied upon and every evil thing is just going to be done away with. Amen. That whole curse is going to be gone. Yes. And it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and there's going to be, then life will come forth out of it. Pure life, without any curse. You won't have to worry about weeds anymore. Yeah. You're not going to have to worry about wild beasts overtaking everything. It's not going to be that way. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely pure. Amen. There'll be no, not one speck of sin. That's the process this natural land is going through. At the moment... We still have to tame it and subdue it and all that. But there will be a time when we won't have to. It will be absolutely pure. Amen. And there will also be a holy city. I like this one. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former, former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I like that. I make all things Amen. new. Hallelujah. This old cursed earth is going to be made new. Amen. That's right. Next one. Okay, now we get to my scripture that I read at the start. This old earth has got to go through the same process. Yes. This, this piece of land here has to go through the same process. It's still got this curse in it. Although we subdue it and everything, it's still got a curse. Yeah. It's still got to go through the same process that the natural earth went through. We've got to have a new, pure, eternal body. We've got to be remade to be new and pure and eternal. No, no molecule of sin anywhere. Amen. Now, there's two ways that we achieve that, in the, in the way that God achieves that. The first way is either is by death, when we die. But the second way is what we're approaching now is what they call a body change, a rapture, a body change. And that's why 
2 Corinthians says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, so let's say we die, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven, with our new house, our new pure one. But then he talks about, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, but this cursed land, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. We go through this process now that we go through this change from mortal to immortality, from corruption to incorruption. And... Maybe those hearing my voice may go through the, if the Lord doesn't tarry, go through the second one, which is the rapture, which is a body change. Yeah. And that, that is to get rid of this old, do away with this carnal flesh for the last time. <laughs> That's what it's for, to do away with it. Purify it. So then we get our, we get our, new, our new tabernacle. And then we... Our new land has got no curse in it. It's just a pure, perfect land. And then we go and dwell in, a, in the new land. This, we will come back and dwell here. But it won't have the curse of sin that it's got. It'll be a new and perfect land. Amen. I read down to here, but I want to read the last one from 1 Corinthians 15. It says, verse 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. I'm looking forward to, as much as I enjoy a good fight, I'm looking forward to rest. Yes. <laughs> but while we're here, it's a fight. Yes. Amen. And while we're here, we... we I'm so glad that the Lord said that we will be one. And because then we can say, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. It's no longer me that has to try and strategize and do all that. I just surrender to his governance. And, it's, and when I say, my old man, when my old man said I, it was I. But when the new man says I, it's me and Jesus. <laughs> That's the big difference. And he's the commander in chief. He's the husband. So the husband and wife can both say I, but the, the husband says the direction. I, I like it how the Lord does that. I say Amen. I, but I know it's the Lord. It's, I surrender to the Lord and it's His direction. Amen. And He will conquer yes. every enemy. Amen. But don't be scared. Don't, don't hold back. Paul says, we're not them that draw back to perdition, but them that press on to the saving of the soul. We're, we're, not, we're not ones that just draw back and are scared. We're not scared. We have been given promises. We read in the Old Testament of all the times that God undertook and we can't see one place where it failed. So we have to realize, how can he fail? And a lot of the times, all the trials we go through are just to, for us to learn, I won't fail. Trust me. Trust me. Press on. Trust me. I won't fail. Praise the Lord. Let's, um, let's um, stand up and we'll sing... Um, Let's, let's just pray as we stand and then we'll sing um, the old song, We Are Able to Go Up and Take the Country. Mm. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful tonight, today, Lord, to know that we've surrendered our governance over to you. Lord, that the, the only thing that we ever did when we governed things ourselves was make a, make a mess of our life, right. Lord, and... and let any old thing happen in our life. And Lord, our life was full of misery, full of pain, Amen. full of heartache, full of hurt, full of confusion, Amen. full of darkness. But Lord, we're so grateful that you decided that you wanted us. Yes. Lord, and that you, you, in spite of us, you, you came down. Yes. And Lord, you overtook us by your great love. Lord, and those of us here can say like Paul, Lord, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're happy to be your prisoner. We're happy to be serving you. We're happy to be under your governance. It's such a wonderful thing. Lord, and to, to see you just establish our lives. Lord, and to, to just cut all those old agreements that, that 
our old man had made and all those devils just to see you drive out each one of them one at a time. Yeah. Little by little, you said you drive them out, Lord, and, and to, to see in our own lives, Lord, how little by little you're driving these things out. Lord, and may we continue to be strong in faith. As Paul said, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. May that be our testimony, Lord. I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Lord, we know the fight essentially isn't with each other or anything. It's actually with ourselves. Lord, and the more we surrender to you and, and overcome ourselves, then the more you can work through us, Lord, to actually achieve things. So I just pray you bless each one here. Bless them in their walk with you, Lord. May they be encouraged. May they go from strength to strength. May, may your word always get through to our minds, Lord, and not we get these other thoughts. May we discern every thought and take every thought captive that, that comes in. Discern where it's from, if it's from you, if it's your thought, Lord, we just lay hold upon it. But if it's not from you, we want to cast it out. And I just pray, of, um, yeah, just your richest blessings and the, the ones that weren't here this morning. And we just thank you so much for your great love towards us and your great care and compassion. Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Let's sing um, the old song, We Are Able to Go Up and Take the Country. Amen. Always like this one because it's, it sounds really positive, you know, it sounds powerful. Yeah. I like it. We are able. Is it low? We are able to go up and take the country, to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be there our way to hinder God will surely give the victory sons of God in the power of the Savior's name march forward for Jesus is ever Sons of God, march forward. We are more than conquerors in His name. Sons of God, march forward in the power of the Savior's name. Okay, hang on, hang on. We just gotta. That's not an E, man. That's too low. We need a bit more gusto. Let's do it in A. We are able to go up from the top. We are able to go up and take the country To possess the land from Jordan to the sea Though the giants may be there our way to hinder God will surely give the victory Sons of God, march forward in the power of the Savior's name. Sons of God, march forward. For Jesus is ever the same. Sons of God, march forward. We are more than conquerors in His name. Sons of God, March forward in the power of the Savior's name. One more time. We're able. We are able to go up and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be there our way to end. God will surely give the victory. Sons of God, march forward in the power of the Savior's name. Sons of God, march forward, for Jesus is ever the same. Sons of God, march forward, we are more. Sons of God, march forward in the power of the Savior's name. Sons 
of God. Sons of God, march forward in the power of the Savior's name. Sons of God, march forward for Jesus is ever the same. Sons of God, march forward. We are more than conquerors in His name. Sons of God, forward in the power of the Savior's name. Amen. I just one more slow song as we go. Um, Mercy rewrote my life. And then we'll be dismissed after this. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen my soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life. One more time. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life. Let's just do it once more. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. I
I'm going to love, love till there's just no more love. I could never, ever out love the Lord. Mercy. Oh, mercy. And 
So oh. 